Okay, so we're still working on the normal distribution, sorry, the normal distribution. This time we're do using the inverse cumulative normal distribution. Otherwise, sometimes it's just called the inverse. Uh, now, it's called the inverse because we're going to be doing the inverse of things that we've been doing before. Um, you'll remember from past videos that we've been finding the probability that, say, um, if this was, uh, I think there was a question with light bulbs, this is um, light bulbs with an average um, life of 150 hours and a median, sorry, a standard deviation of 15 hours. We've been finding the probability that, say, um, a light bulb has a life under 170. And we calculate that probability. Now we're going to do the reverse. We're going to say, if we want to find, um, so, say, if the probability of this happening, the probability of that happening is, say, 34%, what's that value there? Uh, we'll, we'll go through some questions and it should become fairly clear what we're doing. Okay, so find the value of C. And for this particular question, we're going to assume it's a standard normal distribution. So don't forget, a standard normal distribution has a mean equal to 0 and a standard deviation equal to 1. Um, now, there's no reason particular we're using the standard deviation, sorry, the standard normal distribution. Um, but it's just convenient because then we won't have to keep typing in different numbers. Okay, so let's look at this first question. Here. The probability that Z is less than C, and that's the thing we're trying to find the value of C, is equal to 0 0.57. Okay, so the probability, so that's a probability like 57%. Now, if I draw my normal distribution, my standard normal distribution, 0 and standard deviation equal to 1. Now, if the probability of something being less than C is equal to 0 0.57, it must mean that it's more than halfway. This, Because remember, the probability of this happening, having less than 0, is 50%. So it must be somewhere around there. It's important that you try to think about these questions a little bit so you've, you've got some idea about what you're dealing with. Now, the important thing to note here is this less than sign. Okay, let's take a look on our calculator. Go back to our menu. Try to get that out of the light. There we go. Now, go to stat mode. Oops. Okay. Try that again. Go to stat mode. Distribution. A normal distribution. Now, we've used NCD previously. We're going to use the inverse normal this time. Come on, calculator. Okay, now, you, data needs to be variable, not list. Now, this is important. Tail. Left tail, right tail, or center. So, you can see here, if this is our left tail, and this is our right tail, we want to know about stuff moving towards the left tail. Now, if that was a greater than side, we'd be doing things uh, moving towards the right uh, right tail. We'll also look at one where you use the, the center tail as well. Sorry, it's not really a center tail, but a center. So anyway, this question here is a left tail question. Now, the area, the area that we're interested in, otherwise known as the probability, that's 0 0.57. Now, the standard deviation is going to be equal to 1, and the mean is going to be equal to 0. Now, I'm not sure if your calculators are going to sketch this. Mine doesn't. Uh, mine will only calculate it. Okay, so it's given me an inverse of 0 0.1763. Now, what does that number mean? That number means that this thing, this C value, is 0 0.1763. So this entire question has said that the probability that Z is less than 0 0.1763 is equal to 0 0.57. Okay, um, now this uh, second question is identical. The only difference with this second question 
is that when you sketch it, realize that the probability of it happening is 0 0.25. So the C value is going to be somewhere around there. Again, it's a probability that Z is less than something. And this will show when we when we do it. It's a left tail again because we're going less than. Area 0 0.25. That's, that's all the same. And we can execute that. Negative. Re be really careful when you read these. Negative 0 0.67. So in other words, the C value is equal to negative 0 0.67. Which means that the probability that Z is less than negative 0 0.67 is equal to 0 0.25. Okay, this third question, I might make a bit more space here. This third question is a greater than one. So the probability that Z is greater than C is equal to 0 0.91. Now important thing to note here, I'll just draw in my uh, mean and my standard deviation. Important thing to note here, 91%, 0 0.91. That's a really high probability that something is greater than C. Greater than, as in in this direction, and a really high probability. So we would expect our C value to be down here somewhere, negative. Let's try it out. Oops, go to my stat mode. Now it should be fairly clear that we're going to use a right tail this time. The area was 0 0.91 everything's still the same and we can execute that and we get negative 1.34 so again just to clarify that means that the probability that Z is greater than negative 1.34 is equal to 0 0.91 Okay, now this last one, uh, it's written quite interestingly, but um, it's an example of a center tail. The probability uh, that negative C is less than Z, which is less than C, is equal to 0 0.9544. So these C values are the same, but the probability of something being between those two, sorry, one's negative, one's positive, but the magnitudes are the same. The probability that uh, something being between those two values is 95.44%, so quite high. So 0, 1, here's negative C, here's C, and we're finding the area between negative C and C. Uh, so this is what we call a center, or a center, it's not really called a center tail, but uh, it's called a center. Okay, so this time the tail is a center. The area we're looking for is 0 0.9544. 1 and 0 because we've been dealing with standard normal all this time. And we can execute this. And we get negative 1.999 and 1.999. And you can see that it, it um, creates this thing where you do the absolute center of something. Um, that's pretty close to it. I guess the um, the last thing to realize is that even though we've done the standard normal distribution for all of these, there's no reason that a question couldn't be asked that was outside of the standard normal distribution. I would expect most questions that are asked of you would be outside of a standard normal distribution. All right, I've just quickly drawn you up a question here. Now, it's, the wording on it is terrible. Sorry about that. I feel like a it reads like Yoda's written it or something. Uh, light bulbs have a mean equal to 150 and a standard deviation equal to 12. Under how many hours of life would you expect to find 30% of bulbs? Okay, so the question's really saying, here's our uh, normal distribution, 150 and 12. Um, what would be the value of hours, what would be the life that 30% of bulbs fall under? Okay, so hopefully now that I've drawn it, it makes a little more sense. Um, but it's, you can see that it's a left tail question. So the probability that x is less than uh, x 
Now, uh, you can see I'm using X and X, not um, C, and, C and Z. We use this capital X, small X thing when we're dealing with... Um, Uh, when we're dealing with normal distributions, not standard normal distributions, is 0.3, and we need to find x. Okay, so pretty simple. It's a left tail. The area is 0 0.3. Uh, standard deviation, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, standard deviation is 12. Normal um, mean of 150, 143 hours, 143.7 hours. So what that means is in this particular factory, 30% of bulbs will have a life of 143.7 hours or less. Okay, that's the inverse cumulative normal distribution. Uh, really, you've just got to play with them, have a practice, make sure that you're getting the right answers. Uh, there's really not a lot of working involved. It's more about you calculating with these and drawing a picture.